Hi, it's Adam, and welcome to the Dominion video tutorial series. This first video in the series is designed to teach you the rules of Dominion, but also how I teach Dominion. If all you're looking for is the rules of the game, I actually would not recommend watching this video. I'm going to link in the description a video by The Rules Girl. It's a three minute video. It's an excellent video with lots of graphics, and it very clearly explains the rules and setup of the game. If you're teaching only the rules, I think that's a great resource and I would use it. However, the way I teach the game is usually in a game store when someone comes up and asks me to teach them the game or I'm in a group and someone needs to learn the rules of the game. I have my Dominion box there. We don't have YouTube available. And so this is the way I choose to teach the game. Uh, it's had a lot of success and I think it flows well into just them learning to play the game and, and getting a decent grip on introductory strategy. So that's the way I prefer to do it. I've had a lot of success with it and I wanted to share it with you in this video. Starting with the next video, we'll get into more strategy advice, but if you already know the rules and you're not interested in how I teach the game, I'd recommend just skipping this video and moving on or just going to the rules girl, link in the description. Anyway, here we go. Now, if you've ever played Magic the Gathering, Dominion is kind of like the two phases of that game put together. In Magic, you stay at home and build your deck, and then the second phase is you go to the game store and play other people with your deck. Uh, in Dominion, you are building your deck as you play with your deck. So, uh, there's a common supply of cards here that are available to all players, and each player starts with the same deck of ten bad cards. You got seven coppers, they give you money, and three estates. These are worth points at the end of the game. At the start of the game, we're going to shuffle our cards, and we're going to draw five cards for our hand. So, your turn works like this. There are four phases to the turn. The first one, A for action phase, we're going to skip that because we don't have any action cards in hand. You don't start the game with those. The second one is your buy phase. In your buy phase, you take all of your treasure cards. They say treasure at the bottom. You place them on the table, and you count how much money you have. Each copper is worth $1.00. It's uh, in the middle here and also at the top corners. So I have three coppers, that means I have three dollars. When I have three dollars in my buy phase, I can buy one card costing up to the amount of money I have. So the cost of each card is down here in the lower left corner. Copper costs zero, silver costs three, estates two, curses are zero, uh, don't buy those, they're bad. And then village and oasis here are also three dollars each. So I could buy any of those cards if I wanted to. Uh, anything more expensive, I need more money. Let's say I buy a silver. Cost three, and when I play it, it gives me two bucks. Now, that was it for the buy phase. Now for the cleanup phase, everything, including what I played, what's left in my hand, the card I bought, all of it goes in my discard pile. That's the cleanup phase. Just everything goes into the discard pile. And then finally for the draw phase for D, the fourth, we draw five cards for our next hand. So I'm looking at these five cards for my next hand while my opponents are taking their turn, thinking about what I'm going to be doing. So let's say my opponent takes their turn, and now it's my turn again. Let's do it again. Action phase, no action, so I skip it. Buy phase, I put my treasures on the table, I say I have $4. I can buy a card costing up to $4. Well, the smithy costs 4 and it's an action card, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. Cleanup phase, it all goes to the discard pile, and my draw phase. Oh, well, I don't have any more cards. Well, in Dominion, uh, the game's not over when you run out of a deck. Uh, instead, whenever you need to draw cards and you don't have any cards to draw, you take your discard pile, you shuffle it, and then that becomes your new draw pile. And then that's your new hand. Great. So uh, let's do one more turn, but this time we have an action card in hand. So we're going to talk about the action phase. Action cards, they say action at the bottom, and then they have the name and the cost like normal, but action cards give you a bonus. So during your action phase, you can play one action card. What you do when you play an action card, you put it on the table, you say, I'm playing a smithy, and then you do what the card says. There are various types of things that action cards can do for you. Whenever an action card says plus cards, that means you take that many cards from your deck, and you put them in your hand. Great, so I play the smithy, I draw three cards, and wow, look at all of these cards I have in hand. I have $7, that's like a million dollars, it's super great. So uh, smithy is great for when you want to uh, draw a lot of cards, good times. Let's talk about what these other action cards are going to do for us. So, this is a village. A village gives you plus one card, which we talked about. And then gives you plus two actions. So if any of these cards in my hand were action cards after I played the village, I would have actions to play them. In fact, I would have two actions. So if I played a village and then I played a smithy, 
Now I have all of these cards in my hand, but now if any of them were action cards, I still have an action remaining so that I can play those action cards. So uh, Village is great when you have a lot of action cards that you want to play. Let's talk about Market. Market gives you plus one card, so it replaces itself. It gives you plus one action, replaces the action it took to play it, so you can play more on your turn. Now it has a couple of other things. So this plus one dollar, this will give you, in addition to your treasures, buying power in your buy phase. So let's say I had played a market and I have four dollars in my hand. Well, I play in my buy phase my four dollars plus the one that the market gave me. I have a total of five dollars to spend in my buy phase. So this is just another way of getting money alongside treasures. And then also this plus one buy. So in my buy phase, normally I can only buy one card costing up to the amount of money that I have. If I have something that gives me plus one buy, I get an additional buy during my buy phase, meaning that I can buy up to two cards as long as I have the money to pay for all of them. So in this case, I would have five dollars and two buys. Now I could buy a five dollar card and a zero dollar card, or a two and a three, or something like that. Or I could buy like a four dollar card and I could just forfeit my other buy. Extra buys aren't required to be used. So plus buy is really good when you have so much money and your turns are so great that just buying one card isn't enough to capture the awesomeness of that turn. That's what plus buy is good for. Here we have the Oasis. So we play the Oasis, gives us a plus a card, plus an action, plus a dollar. We know what all that means. And then it says discard a card. So I take my least favorite card in my hand, I put it in my discard pile. Uh, I like to include Oasis in the first game, because even though it's not part of the base set, uh, something that makes you discard cards in the middle of your turn, uh, it kind of helps reinforce the idea that that's the only time when you can discard a card, is either when you're in the cleanup phase and everything goes to the discard, or when something directs you to discard a card. Uh, that can matter for other cards that we're not using right now, but I think it's a good idea to um, get good mechanics and have that kind of stuff become muscle memory. So without the Oasis, remember in the buy phase, I would just be holding this extra state in my hand while I'm buying cards. That's the, quote, right way to do it. And then finally, we have the Militia. The Militia gives you plus $2 to spend, and it says each other player discards down to three cards in hand. So... If I'm looking at my five card hand for next time, and some jerk bag across the table plays a militia on me, now I have to pick my three favorite cards and pitch everything else to the discard pile. So militia is not really good for making friends, but it's probably pretty good for winning the game, and maybe you want to do that. So, what's the point of all this? Well, these green cards are worth points, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins the game. The provinces, they cost eight, and they're worth six VP. There are eight of them in the pile, and when the pile's empty, um, the game is over. So usually, the person who has more provinces wins the game. If I have five provinces, it's going to take a lot to make up this 12-point deficit using lesser victory cards. It's the most efficient source of VP, but it costs eight. This is the most expensive card we have out here. So you're going to need, need to build your deck up in order to have enough money to buy these provinces. Duchies are worth three VP, and they cost five. Uh, so if you think the points are going to matter, maybe the provinces will split for each. Uh, in a two-player game, duchies can be pretty good. And then the estates are worth one VP. They cost two dollars, and you start with a few of those in your deck. Now keep in mind, these green cards, they don't actually do for anything for your deck once you have them. So when you buy them, you actually make your deck worse. But you kind of need to do that in order to win the game. So there's this trade-off in Dominion that's kind of crunchy, and that's sort of the soul of the game. So uh, we keep uh, playing these action cards and trying to have these good turns to buy lots of cool stuff, including provinces. When the provinces are gone, the end of the game happens. Uh, another end game condition is if any three piles are empty, uh, including all of these or any of these, that would also end the game. Maybe provinces are really hard to get, or maybe there's some really good cards over here you want a lot of. That could also happen. So. Uh, for the first game, I like to play with just this five-card kingdom. It introduces a certain number of mechanics, but it deliberately chooses some mechanics to introduce and some mechanics not to. If the person you're teaching is an experienced gamer and is comfortable with a lot of new mechanics, uh, go ahead and throw in a full kingdom of ten cards, and I'll have a suggestion for five other cards and new mechanics to introduce as we do that, which I'll go ahead and do now. So Workshop is an action card. Cost three, it says gain a card costing up to four. Uh, normally the only way we could add cards to our deck is in the buy phase by buying them. When you buy a card, then immediately afterward you gain it, 
with Workshop, though, you play this card in your action phase. You gain a card, costing up to four, and then that happens on top of whatever happened in your buy phase. So if my hand looks something like this, I play my Workshop, I gain something costing up to four, and then I have these three to spend in my buy phase to gain yet another card. So this is just another way that we can gain additional cards in the same turn. Let's talk about trashing. The chapel trashes up to four cards from your hand. Now, uh, the curses are obviously bad cards. Uh, there are attacks out there like the witch that makes other people gain curse cards. So there are ways to end up with curses and you probably don't want those. Chapel is a way to get rid of them from your deck. When you trash a card, it doesn't go to your discard. It goes to a separate pile, the trash pile. And most of the time that means it's just gone from the game forever. So curses obviously you want to trash, but even your starting cards, the coppers and estates, these are bad cards. So uh, it usually benefits you to trash them. This trashing and gaining can be combined into cards like Remodel. It says trash a card from your hand, gain a card costing up to two more than the trash card. So I could trash an estate with the Remodel, and the estate costs two, so I could gain something costing up to four. So now I get rid of a bad card and replace it with a better card from my deck. So Remodel is pretty useful for that. And then, finally, there's Gardens. Not all the Kingdom cards have to be action cards. There are some of them that are victory cards, or treasures, or other things. So this one is worth a point for every ten cards in your deck rounded down. So if I have a deck of a lot of cards, Gardens could be really great, and it only costs four. So, uh, these five cards, plus maybe these other five cards, will make up ten cards that are called a Kingdom. Those ten cards are randomly selected from every available Dominion card that you have access to. The base game comes with 25 of these piles, but there are a few expansions out there. So uh, the game has a lot of variety, and uh, there are so many different combinations of things that could be available and not available. gives the game a lot of replayability, and that's sort of why I keep on playing it and why a lot of other people do. So this is the way I teach the game. Uh, I do it this way just to get people playing the game as quickly as possible. And that's usually the fastest way to get things so, so that they make sense. Uh, in my first game, I usually just open with a smithy and a silver, and I only buy these basic treasures and go for provinces. Uh, they may get more ambitious to do some more of these combos, and, and that's good on them, and a lot of people will win the game that way. And that's just fine. Uh, but I choose, to teach what, I choose to teach the game this way uh, just because I've had a lot of success with it, so hopefully it works for you too. And we'll see you in the next video in the tutorial series.